Anthropogenic Climate Change, a Curse or Opportunity Thomas Stocker, Professor of Climate and Environmental Physics from the Physics Institute at the University of Bern and President of the Ushka Center for Climate Change Research, spoke about this topic at the Nestle International Nutrition Symposium, Nourishing the World. There is clear scientific evidence that the level of carbon dioxide, the most important greenhouse gas, in the lower atmosphere is increasing at an accelerated pace since the Industrial Revolution, by approximately 30% in 2016. Over the last 800,000 years in pre-industrial times, there have been natural variations in the carbon dioxide levels, which go along with the eight ice ages. However, the carbon dioxide levels in the lower atmosphere today are higher than ever before and continue to rise. What does this mean? To some, these levels of greenhouse gas concentrations seem to be too tiny to have an effect. In fact, the greenhouse gases, which include water molecules, carbon dioxide and methane, represent only about 0.4% of the molecules in the air 250 years ago. But they are instrumental to enable life on Earth. These greenhouse gases can absorb infrared radiation from the sun and change the Earth energy balance by plus 33 degrees Celsius. In other words, the greenhouse gases bring up the average temperature on the Earth's surface from about minus 18 degrees Celsius to about 15 degrees Celsius. Hence, these small amounts of greenhouse gases have a big effect on the temperature. What happened in the last 250 years? The amount of all greenhouse gases has augmented by about 10%. If 4,000 molecules of greenhouse gases can change global warming by 33 degrees Celsius, then even an increase of 10% in greenhouse gases will definitively contribute to further warming. Another myth that can be heard from skeptics. The Earth has stopped warming. To better understand a trend in temperature, the longest possible period of temperature measurements should be considered, as mentioned by Professor Stocker. Since the beginning of temperature recording in 1880, the annual mean temperature has increased on the northern and southern hemisphere. Each of the last three decades has been successively warmer than any preceding decade. Temperature changes from various individual parts of the world between the year 1901 and 2012 is shown on the screen. It confirms warming of most parts on Earth. Thus, the warming of the climate system is undeniable and the human influence on the climate system is clear. What are the possible consequences in 60 and 80 years from now? There still can be variations in the annual mean temperatures, but further warming will increase the likelihood of severe, pervasive and irreversible impacts. Changes in average temperature have been projected up to the year 2100 for different parts of the world. It has been noted that in almost all parts of the world the average temperature will significantly increase. Climate change projection includes a significant increase in the number of tropical days in Europe, for example, with maximum temperatures over 35 degrees Celsius during the day and no cooling during the night, that is with temperatures above 20 degrees Celsius. Changes in the global water cycle in response to the warming over the 21st century will not be uniform. The contrast in precipitation between wet and dry regions and between wet and dry seasons will increase, although there may be regional exceptions. Furthermore, the sea level will continue to increase by 70 centimetres and will continue to rise in the 22nd century. Climate change is not a problem of physical variables but a real resource problem. The warming will also affect human health. For example, the human body will reach the physiological limits to cope with the heat in some regions. Another resource problem is water and land if the sea levels continues to rise. The Paris Agreement in 2015 is a historical moment and the first important step to hold the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Limiting climate change by any climate target on warming will require substantial and sustained reductions of greenhouse gas emissions, in other words, a limited carbon budget. 
Based under the conditions in 2015, scientists came up with the scenario that the carbon budget for achieving the 2 degrees Celsius target will be exhausted by about 2035. This means that by 2035 the 2 degrees Celsius target will be lost, provided there will be no significant mitigation to the climate change. Climate change is furthermore a threat to sustainable development and has special associations with some of the sustainable developmental goals. Without climate change mitigation, these sustainable developmental goals cannot be achieved. But also, without these sustainable developmental goals, there is no climate change mitigation. So what is needed? A fourth industrial revolution is needed that goes beyond decarbonisation. Professor Stocker characterises this industrial revolution as sustainabilization that includes closed material energy cycles and the recognition that we are living on a finite planet. Like any previous industrial revolution, this fourth industrial revolution of sustainabilization will in the end produce smarter products, new jobs and new professions, better life quality and, more importantly, new values. There is much reason and motivation to finally start with this revolution.